Hey everybody, welcome to your weekend review for the week of Monday, January 16th, 2023, and oh, what a week it was. Started off Monday being closed. We had the bond market was closed on Monday, although we did get a post from our sponsor at wellthatmakesense.com. This is from the great book Traction by Gino Wickman, where hopefully you've set your goals by now. And then this series will set up the format for being able to accomplish your goals throughout the year, how to have better meetings, how to hit your goals, and how to do a lot of things much more effectively. On Tuesday, the bond market reopened and was down a quarter of a point very early. Stocks and bonds lost ground in overseas trading during the overnight night session and during the market holiday. Uh, there isn't a single obvious motivation for the weakness, but someone had to pick a focus. It would be speculation over upcoming policy from the Bank of Japan. The measure of the New York state manufacturing activity plummeted in January to the lowest level since the early months of the pandemic as new orders and shipments collapsed. New orders dropped nearly 28 points to minus 31.1, also the lowest since May of 2020. This sounds bad, but it's good for inflation, so eh, pick your poison. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York's General Business Conditions Index decreased nearly 22 points to minus 32.9 data show Tuesday. The reading below zero indicates contraction. The figure was more than twice as weak as the most pessimistic estimate by Bloomberg survey of economists. On Friday, we also got consumer sentiment as a reminder. So the market was kind of digesting. Consumer sentiment came in at 64.6 on a 60.5 forecast. It was 59.7 previously. One year in Inflation expectations came in at four versus four previously. Five year inflation expectations came in at three versus 2.9 previously. Last week, we saw the UMBS index gain 0.36% in excess return, giving a helping hand to by declining volatility. And the Federal Reserve has floated the idea of downshifting to a 25 basis point focus. Going forward, Fed futures sees a terminal rate of less than 5%, while the June FOMC is a top up. By the time summer cools into fall, forecasters see that. Fed rate cut because it'll be in a recession. Barry B at MBS Highway predicting an improved Q2 for inflation, predicting inflation moving much lower and a drop in rate, specifically calling for a May 10th improvement, which is a reaction to April CPI, largely due to the numbers being a 12 month average and last year's numbers increasing then, therefore making the year over year better. Doesn't make the cost of eggs any cheaper though. PPI and the 20 year auction are coming on Wednesday and debt ceiling announcement on Thursday. Those are kind of the big events of the week. At the end of the day, we're down 19 basis points at 101.28, which puts us just underneath that range. So it's puts in that very narrow range between 101.671 and 101.01. Uh, while the Friday's Treasury announcement that the debt limit has been, will be breached on 119 is concerning, the Treasury will again employ extraordinary measures, air quotes, to keep the government functioning through early June. If the ceiling isn't raised by then, watch out. With the House of Representatives hands uh, and Republican hands and the White House and Senate both in Democratic, and it's exactly the same scenario of 2011, the last time we had a major crisis. That was from econ70.com. Wednesday, the 18th, was a solid open for MBS being up 33 basis points early. The 10-year was down 14 basis points in the morning. The overnight session started off with the Bank of Japan holding policy steady despite speculation that it would allow a wider band of yields. We got retail sales. Retail sales came out at minus 1.1 on a minus 0.8 forecast. It was minus 1.0 previously. Last month was revised down from 0.6. So it went down from point, negative 0.6 to negative 1. Core PPI came in at 5.5 on a 5.7 forecast. Inflation at wholesale level 0.5% month in, fell 0.5% month over month according to the PPI. This comes after a 0.4 increase in October and 0.2 in December. The decline is driven primarily by a decrease in energy prices. The index is up 6.2% on a year-over-year -year basis. Stripping out food and energy and trade services, the index rose 0.1% month over month in January. 4.6% year over year. Overall, it looks like inflation is on its way down. However, it is far from where the Fed wants it to be. Industrial production fell 0.7% in December and manufacturing production fell 1.3%. Capacity utilization went from 79.4 to 78.8. Again, I have to look at the Air Atlanta Fed's estimate and I don't see how this data comports with a 4.1 GDP growth. It just doesn't add up.
With mortgage rates now at a four month low, we saw a healthy pickup in mortgage application data with a 27.9% change week over week. According to the ABA, the 30 year fixed rate decreased 19 basis points to 6.23. That helped to pick up in both purchase and refinance activity. Home builder sentiment rose slightly in January, according to NAHB Wells Fargo. This is after a string of declines because those guys are just so pessimistic. Weaker domestic data led by retail sales gave a rally a second win in the morning hours while some Fed speakers pushed back. Others acknowledged that the 25 basis point hike reality. 10 years were ultimately able to break and hold uh, below the prevailing range boundary at you know, 3.40, 3.42, ending up at 3.370, which is a pretty decisive break. At the end of the day, we were up at up 23 basis points at 101.53, which puts us just underneath that 38% Fibonacci retracement line. On the border of possibly, it looks like it did test that today, though it held. So we're in this very narrow range of rates there. We also got news, China's domestic gross product grew 3% in 2022, according to data released yesterday, down from 8.1% rate in 2021, and below the government's target of 5.5%. It marks the slowest pace since the 1970s as the world's second largest economy struggled under strict COVID zero policies and a decline in the real estate market. The economy grew 2.9% in the fourth quarter as China relaxed those policies that stunted retail sales and disrupted production. Employment remains a concern with the urban jobless rate at 5.5%. So China's economy is shrinking, which we sell a lot of goods over there. We manufacture a lot of goods over there, but that's also what they're willing to admit. So it's probably way worse. All in all, Thursday was a very quiet day. UMBS were down eight basis points on the open. Bonds began the overnight session in stronger territory as overseas buyers dogpiled. On Wednesday, strong move, gradual weakness set in after that. We got jobless claims this morning. It came in at up 190,000 versus a 214,000 estimates of jobs are staying strong. It was 205,000 previously. Continuing claims increased six. 17,000 to 1.65 million. The Philly Fed Business Index came in at negative 8.9 on a negative 11 forecast. It was minus 13.8 previously. Prices came in at 24.5 versus 36 previously. Jobs came in at 10.9 versus negative 9 previously. Housing starts fell 1.9% month over month and 21.8% year over year to an annualized rate of 1.38 million. This was a touch above expectations. Building permits fell 1.6% month over month or about 30% year over year. Not surprising given how lousy the house purchase market is. KB Homes announced that their cancellation rate was so large they are halting new projects and just working on the backlog. The NAHB housing index fell four points from 31 to 35. Both present and future ratings increased. Traffic increased three, though still very low at 23. At the end of the day, we were up two basis points, ending up at 100.5, which is just below that 38% Fibonacci retracement. The upper end of that range, which has proven to be a pretty solid ceiling. Got a lot of support at the bottom on the floor, so we can kind of watch where the market goes from here. So we have a real convergence of, of factors going on. So pretty much stability within the realm of our world lately. So. Pretty safe there. See what happens on Friday. And Friday, we ended the week with a bit of a bummer. MBS went down 11 basis points early. Bonds began the overnight session with minimal losses, but yields rose at a faster pace when European trading started. There was no big ticket events or headlines driving the weakness, but some comments suggest uh, an improved COVID outlook in China and higher oil prices were adding to the pressure. Both signs are pointing towards quarter point hikes from the Fed here on out. The mix signals complicate discussions over when to pause following an anticipated quarter point on February 1st. Also, many different opinions out there on when the first rate drop will be because of recession, uh, when that will come. Investors and economists continue to doubt Fed forecasts that rates will rise above 5% from their current levels, just below 4.5%. Again, most people are predicting that there will be a recession coming fast and they will have to cut rates pretty much immediately after raising them. This should be fun. Existing home sales fell 1.5% month over month, 34% year over year on a seasonally adjusted rate. Oh man, that's a big number. The median existing home price rose 2.3% year over year to 366900 
that sounds to me like a, like all of the activity is in the lower price points, which has been the case for a while. There just hasn't been enough of it. Total housing inventory is 970 units. Unsold inventory is a 2.9 month supply, though traditionally about 30% of that is actually under contract. All cash buyers are still holding around 28% of sales. First time home buyers represented 31% of sales, which is up from 28%. Properties remain on the market for 28 days, which is pretty low. Fannie and Freddie also have updated their LLPA matrices, which is going into effect May 2023. Your investors will probably do it a lot sooner than that. But basically, it's reducing the penalty for low credit and high LTV and increasing the hits for people that actually pay their bills on time. Bonds rallied to the best levels a month earlier this week, but have been retreating ever since. At first, the retreat was gradual. By Friday, it was much more pronounced, still lacking any compelling scapegoats. Earlier in the day, uh, analysts put in China reopening, heavy selling in European banks spilled over hawkish terms like we talked about. Traders also may simplify things, also squaring positions ahead of next week with no spit, Fed speakers or anything like that. At the end of the week, on the day, we're down 16 basis points to 101.34, which puts us in the lower half of that very narrow range. That flat red line is at 101.671. The career red line is the 25-day moving average at 101.79, which has been providing a pretty good little channel right there for a week, 10 days-ish. So we'll look at next week, and next week, not a ton of stuff going on. We have uh, Wednesday, we get a couple of auctions. Thursday, as usual, we get a uh, jobless plan, and we also get GDP advance and a seven-year note auction. Those could move the market. And then we get the core PCE inflation on Friday, as well as inflation sentiments. So those should be things that people are really paying attention to uh, right before coming up to the Fed. Over the weekend, check out some more common influences at wellthatmakesense.com as well as MBS Highway, MBS Live, RobBrisman.com, and of course, our sponsor, wellthatmakesense.com. Have a great weekend.